This is a Briggs & Stratton portable generator. Um, it, it's uh, 5250 running watts and 7350 starting watts. Uh, it's got a single cylinder overhead valve engine, uh, float carburetor. Uh, it's got a, I gotta change the oil on it. It's got a wet sump type oil system, so it's a simple change. There's no, there's no oil filter. Um, it holds 32 ounces of, of oil. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to check the RPM to make sure it's around 3600 RPM. Uh, the no load RPM it, it should be around 3600, but it could be as high as uh, 37, 3750. Uh, uh, to get 60 hertz, which is what you need for your electrical, electrical appliances in the United States, uh, the engine needs to turn over th uh, 3600 RPM, which is uh, 60 times per second. So that's how you get to 60 hertz which is 60, 60 cycles per second. Um, <clears throat> so I need to check the RPM. Then I'm going to check the outlets for the correct voltage and frequency. Uh, <clears throat> this is the outlets on this thing. It's a 120 volt, uh, 240 volt, 30 amp outlet, AC, uh, 120 volt AC, 20 amp outlet, uh, four of them. It's got two circuit breakers. Um, <clears throat> Pretty nice engine. Uh, I don't know what the horsepower is. I know it's 18 cubic inches. Uh, horsepower in these generators is usually two horsepower for every uh, thousand watts of of uh, uh, electrical power. So uh, this should be around um, around 10 horsepower. Uh, it's got a got a recoil starter pull starter. Um, like I said, it's a really nice engine. Uh, I'm going to get this thing going and uh, get it warmed up and change the oil and then uh, we'll check those outlets and I'll videotape that. I'm going to use this tack to uh, check the RPM of this engine. Um, the RPM of the engine should, with no load should be around 37, 3750. Um, this tack measures, uh, it's for a two-stroke engine so um, it actually sees uh, it, it interprets each each uh, uh, ignition pulse as one revolution, but um, in a four-stroke engine, uh, the ignition pulse happens every two revolutions. So um, you actually have to double the whatever you, whatever it displays. You need to double it on a four-stroke engine. Um, so it should be around uh, around 1850, 1900 um, um, RPM, and then that would be around 30, 36, 3700 uh, RPM. Uh, so let's start it and then uh, after that I'll check the, the voltage output with the voltmeter and the frequency. So let's start it. Turn it on. And
So you could see on the meter uh, on the upper scale, it's getting about 1850 on the RPM. So it's around uh, around uh, 3700, which is within within spec. Then the voltages were a little over 120, which was which is good, and the frequency was was close to 60. It was like 58, 59. So that was all good. Um, so now I got the engine warmed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the oil. I had to elevate the engine a little bit to get the uh, get the pan underneath it, and also I got it more level. So um, and just here's a drain plug. It's a 12 millimeter. This this engine was actually made in Japan. Um, don't know if it was made by. Uh, popular manufacturer like Yamaha or Honda and then just put the Briggs and Stratton name on it. And this is your oil fill cap. You can go ahead and take that off. It's got a built in built on dipstick for it. Once you get all the oil drained out you can uh, put your oil drain plug back on. Um, make sure you got this this uh, I think it's an aluminum type gasket would we'll make sure that that's that's okay because that will keep this from leaking this drain plug um, I don't have torque specs on this drain plug so um, just, to, just tighten it snug after you get it uh, oil replaced you can you can start the engine and check for any leaks uh, around the drain plug and uh, make sure your fill caps are all tightened down um, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, you want to clean the engine, clean, especially around the area where you add oil so you don't get any dirt in the engine. And uh, it's important to warm up the engine oil before you change it because it flows easier and it's uh, more likely to get particles and contamination suspended in the oil so it comes out with the used oil. This particular engine uses about 32 ounces of oil, so one quart. And fill it. You don't want to fill it too quick because it will come back up on you. Um, when you get the uh, when you get the engine on when you when you get the oil in the engine you, and you want to check to make sure you got enough oil in it um, make sure that the, the generator is on level ground so uh, the engine's level uh, this type dipstick on 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 this type of engine um, where it's low it's not like above the engine uh, you don't need to screw it in just uh, just seat it against the threads and pull it out and. And then take your take your reading. You can see that that's full. It's 32 ounces, so we're good to go. Install your uh, fill plug and make sure it's tight. There's also an O-ring on this fill plug. You might want to might want to check it for cracks. Make sure it's uh, still flexible, um, so it doesn't leak. And that's it. Changing the engine oil on these portable generators is usually a pretty easy task because these small engines that they use on these generators uh, don't have a pressurized oil system. It's just a splash type oil system, so it's just a matter of uh, draining the oil out and adding fresh oil. Um, but uh, you know, uh, changing your oil is an important part of maintenance and something that shouldn't be overlooked. So uh, you can't change your oil too often, so it doesn't hurt the engine and it's something that should definitely be done on a regular basis. So I hope you find this video helpful and thank you for watching.